Yeah, thank you all for, for uh, being here this afternoon. We've uh, decided to take the step, one public schools, that is to um, extend our spring break. We have spring break coming up next week, and then the following week, the original schedule called for three days of teacher professional development and other staff development, and then two days of school on Thursday and Friday. Um, we've decided to cancel school for that Thursday and Friday, so um, and then to do our, our professional development with our staff, teachers and otherwise, remotely, um, virtually, if you will, so that we can uh, essentially close our schools down for a period of 17 days, um, giving, up, giving us a chance to do a couple of things. One, to do a, a very deep cleaning of, of uh, all of our buildings, and to buy us some time to see how the, uh, the progression of COVID-19 um, develops um, through the state. Um, we know that the really only effective reaction to COVID the spread of COVID-19 is through um, social distancing. And we know that uh, with 5,000 staff and about 33,000 students, we impact um, every community in the greater metro area. And so it's an incumbent upon us to, um, to do what we can to um, stem the tide and uh, hopefully um, slow down the spread of COVID-19. Does anyone have questions? Yeah, I'll just say that uh, what's the situation for uh, kids who rely on the school lunches when uh, you are in session? providing lunches to those children? We, we will be providing meals to our um, to all of our students um, on the Thursday and Friday that normally would have been school days. Um, those will be distributed um, in a grab-and-go fashion, basically a sack lunch um, at our 10 middle school sites around the city. And there was a fear that uh, around social media and around that a teacher may have had uh, the disease. Is that uh, we have no knowledge of, of any of our staff being uh, exposed or having contracted the virus. Was there a specific catalyst for calling for this uh, extended closure? Well, we've been examining the situation, you know, for a couple of months and trying to get the best information that we can. That's been notoriously difficult to come by. Um, so the more that, that I and my staff have uh, researched what's really happening around the country, um, knowing that we do not have um, nationwide enough testing kits, that likely um, the, uh, the, the spread of the virus is much greater than what we currently understand. Um, we thought we would take this natural break that was already built into the calendar and with a, with a more innovative calendar that we have in place this year, students were going to have a, an extended break. So we thought that uh, extending that a couple more days would give us a meaningful um, period of social iso isolation, social distancing, if you will, for, for our entire district community to hopefully at least slow down what spread is currently happening. Um, and again, to the degree um, that, that we know, um, it's not directly impacting us, but we certainly anticipate that that will be the case if it's not already. Um, we just have very little information about uh, the, 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 rapidity, the, the rapidness of the spread um, and how, uh, how far it's reached its tentacles into our community already that we're just not currently aware of because um, testing has just been so difficult to come by. Is there a plan in terms of online classes? And might you try to put some of this curriculum online that you wouldn't have in a normal schedule? Um, at this point, we don't have a, a plan in place, but we do have a, a strategic COVID-19 team in place uh, of about 17 leaders from around the district representing virtually every, uh, every department in the district. And that is one thing that we're going to continue to explore um, to see what, what additional steps we could take in the event that, that we do have a case in one of our schools. Uh, child care is certainly going to be a challenge for some families. Um, is there anything that uh, you can say to those parents that might alleviate some of their concerns? You know, uh, child care is definitely a concern. Um, we do know that, that uh, school, anytime the school is closed, when families are planning on having their children being served by the schools, that's at best an inconvenience and a, and a true hardship in many instances. Um, social distancing is really required to, to stem the tide of the virus. Um, so we haven't uh, discovered a solution. Um, anytime we're bringing folks together from various communities and putting them in the same place, 
we're creating the conditions for the spread of the virus. So we, we don't have a comprehensive answer to that. Um, we are in contact with the city and we'll be reaching out to Polk County, um, looking for broader community um, uh, strategies to, to take care of child care needs for our families that will need to continue to go to work so that they can um, pay the rent and, and keep the, the water and the electricity on. Are you advising the parents anything specific regarding social um, distancing, such as keep their kids indoors? Or uh, you know, we're not we're not advising um, families to keep their kids indoors necessarily. I mean, out, outside in sunshine is is healthful um, f for everyone, um, but we are discouraging um, convening um, informal groups and especially larger groups in settings outside of the school. Um, we can prevent what we can prevent. Um, but we're, we'll be providing um, families with best practices as far as personal hygiene practices and, um, and we'll be continuing to, to um, provide guidance for families on a daily basis at least through March 30th, including um, not seeking out group activities, whether it's at the mall or a restaurant or um, uh, anywhere else where, where folks may gather in large groups. It is really best for, for families to um, keep a distance from, from other individuals. Have you worked with or spoken with uh, IDPH about this decision? Are they advising or is this unilateral? Uh, we really made this dis decision on our own. We did just receive a, an update literally about two minutes ago from the Department of Education um, saying that at this point in time um, the Iowa Department of Public Health is not um, is not advising for school closures, but we saw a window of opportunity here where um, we, we could actually create a meaningful um, gap um, in services that would uh, be as, hopefully be as, um, have as little impact as possible on our families and still provide um, the, the recommended um, 14 or greater days of, uh, of essentially self-quarantine. So they're essentially just missing two days of actual class, is that right? Yes. Okay, and then will those have to be made up at the end of the year? Um, at this point in time, we would not have to make up those days. We, um, we build our calendar on hours, and we have um, hours beyond what's required by the state. Um, if we go beyond the two days, um, which you know certainly could be um, in our future, then we would have to make those days up. But at this point, we have enough um, additional hours that we would not have to make those two days up. Are you concerned about people going away for spring break and then coming back and possibly bringing that with them? Uh, we are, and we've provided guidance. Actually, last week we provided guidance to both staff and families about um, guidelines for self-quarantine if travel was um, undertaken at, at certain locations that the CDC has said, um, where the CDC is, is um, advising for self-quarantine. Have you heard of people or teachers canceling their trips because of this? Um, we've heard of some cancellations, and we've, uh, we're aware of some that um, the decision to cancel has not been made, and so the expectation is that they'll self-quarantine. As far as the um, pickup stations for the meals that the kids rely on, sure. um, is there a number that you all are setting a, looking for, like 10,000 meals or? Uh, we, don't, we don't have an estimate on that at this time, um, but, but that, that will be coming. We, we feel like we can accommodate um, the need. Um, and I, I'd have to rely on our um, Director of Food and Nutrition, Amanda Miller, for that, and I don't have her um, at the ready right now. Great question. And with that, like um, with transportation issues, if families are working and maybe kids live too far away from the middle schools, is there anything you all are doing to make sure that they can get to the meal stations? Uh, we are, we, we don't have this um, sealed yet, but we will be um, speaking with DART to, um, to um, hopefully have some flexibility in transportation um, so that families do have access. But we, we decided to distribute meals at 10 different locations to mitigate um, as much as possible um, access issues. And you also mentioned that um, teachers are going to be doing their uh, in-house curriculum virtually. What about like other school staff? Um, are they just going to be losing pay and losing hours? Uh, no, all of our staff will continue to, to receive pay. Um, so some staff w were scheduled to be off, some staff, staff w were, were scheduled to work, but cannot work remotely. They will, they will um, continue to receive their pay. What does the deep clean consist of? Just extra cleaning, or are you just hoping more time will, will clean? Well, time, time is part of it. Um, we will be 
we will be um, doing a more thorough clean. I can't. I, I guess I can't really speak in great detail to that. We already have an aggressive cleaning schedule that we that we implement um, during flu season um, to make sure that all surfaces that are touched by staff and students are cleaned at least once daily. Um, we'll be hitting things um, that we we. Um, We'll be just doing a very thorough job of that, but we also know that the virus can live um, if, if it hasn't been addressed um, chemically for about nine days. So the time factor will also be um, will be of help as well. Do you have any advice for parents too if their kids are concerned about the coronavirus, just hearing about it in the news and in the classrooms? Are you guys talking about that in school, or do you have any advice for them on how to talk to them about it? Uh, Dan, do you have anything? Sure. Yeah. Um, Diane Gladson Health Services and the nurses are really taking an active lead in that um, we sent information out just earlier this week um, doing more hand washing going into the classroom doing demonstrations and and just reinforcing that along with um, posters at all of the sinks we're putting up um, information on our marquees and in our uh, monitors in the office setting so we're really trying to communicate that information as much as we can to all of our students and staff excuse me that was unfortunate um, <laughs> there's also been like concerns that this, there's an unnecessary panic around the coronavirus and obviously we're relying on public health experts who say no this is not overblown um, do you have a message for parents or other folks in the community who think that this is irrational or this is that this is um yeah uh, yeah, so I, I anticipate that many, many people in the community will probably think this is an overreaction um, or irrational. Um, with the research that we've done, we think it's very rational. Um, we think we're being very proactive as opposed to being in a panic situation. Um, once, we have, once we have identified cases in our schools, it's really too late to do meaningful mitigation. Um, so we're trying to do everything that, that feasibly we can do to mitigate the spread um, before it becomes um, so problematic that there really um, is no way to stem the tide. Um, another concern that we have, which is you know much broader than DMPS, of course, is just the capacity of our healthcare system. Uh, if you saw what happened in um, in in uh, China and South Korea um, as they tried to to very rapidly um, build up capacity in their healthcare system. Um, I think when we have a, a more accurate uh, picture of the uh, rate of infection in the United States, we are going to be feeling some, some extreme pressure in our healthcare system. Um, our hope is that we know inevitably coronavirus will, will um, permeate uh, much more broadly um, the entire country. The more we can slow down the pace, the less immediate strain we'll have on the healthcare system and hopefully be able to provide um, the best level of care for, for everyone who requires it. How often do you anticipate to be providing parents and teachers with updates? Um, we, we're, we're committed to providing updates on a daily basis, at least through March 30th. Um, part of our hope in, in this plan is that we buy ourselves some time, buy actually buy the, the broader healthcare community some time, so that we have um, better information about where we really stand, so that we can make, um, make more long-range plans through, through the remainder of the year. And um, is there any consideration to extending the school closure, or is that premature at this point? Uh, that's premature at this point, but, uh, but as, as uh, we're sharing with um, staff and, and families, this is a, a dynamic situation. Um, if, if you follow what's been happening in communities where there have been identified cases, um, those numbers change on a day-by-day -day basis. We anticipate that same thing happening. In, in Iowa and throughout the Midwest. So we're going to continue to monitor that um, very closely and then um, modify our plans as far as holding school um, in, in a way that we think is appropriate and executable. What are some things you'll be looking for that could trigger another, say, week or two of suspended classes? Uh, well, certainly identified cases with people that have uh, a direct um, connection with the district, whether that's um, students or students' families, staff or staff families. That's the first thing that we're looking for. And was there a light bulb moment, so to speak, um, when you were making this decision or some uh, number or piece of research that you saw that said, okay, this is what we have to do? Well, there there are a number of articles that we've been uh, that we've been reading that uh, that take some different angles at 
not just corona, uh, the coronavirus, but also um, historical looks at what different communities have done when there's been an outbreak of, of, a, of a flu or a virus for which there isn't currently a vaccine. Um, and we'll be sharing some of those articles as part of those day-to-day -day updates with folks as we, um, as we move through the next two-week period. Anyone else? Thank you, Dr. Hayward. All right.